Thank you for joining us for the third annual Global Summit, Global Kidney Innovations, Expanding Patient Choices and Outcomes, a collaborative partnership event presented by the American Associate Kidney Patients and the George Washington University School of Medicine and Health Sciences. My name is David Rodriguez. I am an AAKP Board of Director, Executive, Executive Committee Member, and an AAKP Ambassador for the State of Texas. I am also a kidney transplant recipient for almost 10 years with three years on hemodialysis and a patient advocate for 13 years. My journey as a patient has reminded me the importance of access to kidney care innovations and the principle of patient's care choice as a health consumer. Patients play a critical role, both here in the USA and globally, in creating the demand for innovation and more choices because patient lives are in the balance. Our highest expectations is to reinforce the need for patient consumers to raise their voices in the process and create the demand for new diagnostics, devices, and biolog biologics in their independent countries and have a, un a united patient consortium that can support the demand globally and support patients in countries where healthcare systems and or infrastructure may not support patient consumer choice and access to care treatments. Being a part of AAKP allows me to be the voice for many community for my community and the state of Texas and around the country through my personal experience and promote chronic kidney disease awareness around the globe. Today, I am pleased to introduce a longtime friend and an ally of AAKP, Reginald Cito, President and CEO of a CareDX Incorporated, for our session on Emerge Research with Global Implication, Advancement in Cell-Free DNA Testing to Improve Post-Transplant Care. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cito. Hi, my name is Reg Sita. I'm the president and CEO of KDX. I'm really proud to be here today presenting and talking at the third um, event between AAKP and GW. I'm really excited because I was present during the, the inaugural event and we just think it's an, a fantastic initiative that's been uh, undertaken. Firstly, I'd like to thank the leadership team at AAKP. It's been a, a really tremendous partnership working together um, with Richard, um, Paul and, and Ed and what you do every day in and out means a lot to us and for the patients all across the world who are watching today. KDX has been around for more than 20 years and our mission has been simple and our vision is really to be the leading partner for the transplant ecosystem. In terms of our mission, it's really about how do we improve organ outcomes and it's something that's driven by innovation and that's what you know more than 500 employees across the globe focus on day in day out. How do we serve you, the transplant community and the transplant patient? And this is part of the management team. You know, as we looked over the last 12 months, you know, it's been a difficult period around the world and, you know, everyone's been impacted by COVID. But just know front and center to what we do day in, day out has been about how do we support the transplant ecosystem, the transplant patients and the transplant community. We thank all the carers and providers who have been looking after the patients during this very difficult time. And so just to highlight some of the, the key parts of KDX, I mean, in the, in the last few years, we really have become involved with the transplant um, company. And today, if we look at the uh, kidney space, more than you know, one in four patients um, are involved with KDX and with our marker, which you'll hear about later on, called Alice Shaw. And the reason um, you know, we've been around is because we've, we've been known for innovation. And so we were the first to bring gene expression profiling uh, in transplant. We were the first to bring donor-derived cell-free DNA um, in transplant, and that's what you'll hear, hear a bit about today as well. And we're the first actually and only company to bring multimodality approval, that is combining technologies to bring incremental clinical utility. This is so important for us as a company that drives innovation to bring things that mean a difference to clinicians and to patients, and ultimately how can we do better to serve you? And that's really important for us. As a result of that, you know, I can share that on the heart side, more than 90% of centers are involved in using our, our offerings and more than 75% of kidney transplant centers today use our shore. We're really proud to be serving patients and again, to be such a core part of each um, transplant center. And so really this, this highlights and showcases what we do on the patient journey. We have a focus not just on one part of, the, of what patients go through, but in all parts. And this is what we call the, the patient journey, looking at pre-transplant, um, peri-transplant and post-transplant. And on the pre-transplant side, we, we actually are actively involved in the waitlist management area um, through a group called ZinCare, which um, has been part of KDX over the last two years. We also have the latest type of HLA typing um, 
the only type of um, NGS or next generation sequencing called hybrid capture. This means that the tests don't have to repeat in the HLA type because it's the most sensitive test in terms of there being no repeats. And so we're really proud to bring this innovation on the typing side as well. If we move in actually on the post-transplant side, we have Alishaw, which is um, a marker looking at um, cell injury. Um, and uh, it's really transformed what has been done in the in the transplant community on the kidney side. More than you know, 150 centers of the 200 of the United States actively use Alishaw. And we're really proud to be the, the company that's brought this, particularly with our transplant focus. What you'll see here is some of the other offerings we're bringing. And what we found is um, by having more than one offering, we can actually increase the clinical utility in how we assess uh, a transplant patient's organ status. And I think what we have here is IBOX, which is a prognostic algorithm, which is derived and come from the latest and leading uh, center institution in Paris. We also have Alamap, uh, which is gene expression profiling, which is built off um, you know the, the the many years of experience we've had with LMF on the on the kidney on the heart side, and then we have several other different uh, types of tests. And Euromap is an example of a, of a urine test that we're also developing, which came out of Cornell. The important thing is, as we look at this patient journey, we also have a very strong relationship with the uh, the centres which we just talked about. These 150 plus uh, centres, and what we've tried to do also is improve the workflow. So, as anyone who's worked in a hospital setting or a patient. You know, operational workflow, EMR records are so important. And so what we have here is a direct connection through 90 plus um, centers through Otacare. And recently this year, we also acquired a company called TransChart. And so now we're more than 90 um, plus transplant centers with an EMR focus. And we also help centers with what we call um, quality management. And we have a company called Zin Copy that helps out there as well. And some of you may have seen this. So really for us, it's following that patient journey and, and being involved at every critical juncture for you, the patient, and also with the um, with the hospital setting ecosystem. And so, if we if we think of the, the kidney patient, um, is it end stage renal disease? There are really only sort of um, you know two options. You continue on on dialysis, um, or you look at kidney transplant. And I think, without a doubt, the the kidney transplant option is one where you know provides a much improved quality of life, um, and at the same time, it also has um, you know a much longer um, survival period, up to ten years now. So we really we really seen a real shift um, in the whole transplant community of how do we increase the number of available organs, how do we get more patients on transplant. It's actually the basis of a major initiative um, which was announced about two years ago and something which we see continued progress. It just shows how important it is to look at transplantation in kidney patients. And so we have this opportunity to get a transplant, but, which is great news, but at the same time, one in five transplants um, do fail. And so that's that's not good, right? These are such precious organs, and you know it takes such immense time to get these, and there's such a long wait list. So, us as a company, you know, how do we try to improve that um, survival outcome? How do we ensure that any form of injury or potential rejection is picked up earlier? So that was one of our deliberate missions as a company. How can we help out in this space? And so, if we look at our technology, it, it measures donor-derived cell-free DNA, and essentially. Um, this is um, looking at uh, cells that are released during the course of injury or, or death, and it's not something that should be elevated in, um, in, in most patients. What we have is Alishore is you know, the first analytically and clinically validated donor derived cell-free DNA test. And really, we, we brought this into the space. And um, you know, it's, it's hard being a trailblazer because when you bring new technology, when you bring new innovation, um, in a, in a space which um, hasn't had a lot of new innovation um, or new technologies, it, it truly means that you have to shape the space. And we're, we're really proud that there's been such a rapid and, and early adoption at more than 150 centers um, believing and using um, Alishore. And I think more than you know, 60 of these centers actually have a, have a protocol, which is Alishore specific. So in many cases, it's really, really hard to get protocols but, and, and this broad adoption. It's because of our ability now to say, is, is something happening when you um, have this elevation? Because it tells the clinician that there should be a high level of scrutiny and also um, monitoring this patient because you shouldn't be having a, a, an elevation of donor derived cell free DNA because it's a marker of cell injury. And so if we look at um, Alishore from a, a clinical perspective, there are, there are centers that look at how do you do biopsies and a surveillance um, perspective that's fewer and fewer in the United States now. And then you look at what are some of the non-invasive forms. And so historically, there's been serum creatinine. There's also been um, DSA looking at um, 
uh, different forms of injury or potential rejection. What we found through multi-center prospective studies, we're the only company that's done that, again, multi-center prospective studies, is that what Alice Shaw has been able to demonstrate is a more accurate test and early, also an earlier predictor than what we've seen with serum creatinine and also with the prediction of de novo DSAs, which is a precursor of DSA. So this has really a, been a pivotal moment for the field as we now have the ability to do a non-invasive test but also provide you know, unique insights much earlier and more accurately. And so if we think of that from a, a clinician's perspective, um, you know, myself being a, a physician, you know, it, what does this mean as, as, we, as we monitor patients? What does this mean with, with these precious organs that we've been um, provided and the fact that one in five still, still um, fell after five years? And that, that really isn't acceptable. And I think it's uh, something that we, what can we do more of? And so with, um, you know, Al Shore and as, as a biomarker, what we, you can see here is that if it is elevated, um, there's a form of injury. Um, it could be indication of rejection. But what's important here is that it, it allows that point of intervention by the clinician. And so they, there's either adjustments in medication, there's more intensive um, monitoring of the patient, and um, there's further work up. But what you see then is once that patient um, and that uh, graph starts improving, then you can see a decline also in the uh, in the Alishore uh, measurements and so it's it's a good it's a, it's a tool that is used um, in terms of surveillance to allow the ability to detect if there's a change in the status of the organ and that's really important it's such a it's such a precious gift and you know my my aunt's on her waiting for a third and I think you know everyone at KDX has such a special um, sort of association uh, in in the in the in the transplant space um, I recently hired someone who is based out of Florida and her her daughter is a young kidney transplant recipient and so for us, we really live this in our mission. And so I think that's why, you know, our show continues to be such a, a powerful new form of innovation for the space. And the important thing is, you know, we're, we're a company that is driven by bringing good science and innovation. And so we're the only company that does multi-center and has done multi-center prospective studies. And that's really important because you don't want to just do a test in one center. You want to do multiple centers um, as, you, as you develop this technology. On top of that, you want to look at things prospectively. That is, you measure these in patients as doing this actual study um, and not trying to look re retrospectively after um, at, at patients. And um, I think that's really, really important. What we found is we're really good at generating good innovation, but we're even better at generating good science. And what you can see here is we, we've got the most number of publications um, on this space in terms of transplant, donor derived self renate. And more importantly, Al Shaw is the test that has set all the reference standards. So we talk about the different protocols, we talk about monitoring this thing such as what we call relative change value, which tells, you know, should you be even more concerned because the test has changed above a certain threshold between measurements. We created that standard working with transplant centers across the United States. We continue to bring these reference standards, which is so important, multiple publications, which indicate, you know, how do we have early detection of de novo with de novo DSA as a precursor for um, DSA. And um, you know, when you get ambiguous rejections, how can you tell if they're clinically relevant or not? So the importance here is that as a company is that we believe in innovation and we've been the first at every stage, but more importantly, we continue to drive that innovation and generate insights both for the centers, the patients and the physicians and so important for us. And so I, this slide I wanna share because I actually showed it three years ago uh, at the inaugural meeting. And also it reflects a, a board discussion we had, which is we we're being asked, should we go into other areas or should we stay in transplant? And you know, my response at that time and now as CEO is that you know, we're 100% we're transplant focused. And really when we we're challenged upon that, what, what difference will you make as a company, right? And we said, what we wanna do is improve that, that organ survival. And then how do you do it? Like, is it something that's theoretical or is it something that's really real? And so for us, we said, if we know that um, there, there isn't always this, this is standardization um, among treatments. And so that was really important for us to, you know, as we led to Alishaw to have this sort of protocol and surveillance to understand how do we get standardizations across across um, different institutions. The other one is compliance and adherence. Without a doubt, one of the major risk factors um, for you know not having a, a organ survive is if there isn't good medication adherence. And so this compliance and adherence has been something that we've developed tools and actually been actively monitoring through services such as Alicare and our patient care managers. And then we talk about immunomodulation, either being over-suppressed or under-suppressed, can often lead to you know, adverse sequelae. So for us, it's really important to actually make um, 
you know, some investments in developing studies in this area. The point being is if you have a strategy which is really to help patients and improve organ outcomes, then you really have to have a, a process and approach to do it and truly deliver on it and do it on good science. And that's really important for us as a, as a company. And so if we, we've heard about Alishaw, but Alishaw was something we brought more than three years ago. And we have moved on from there because the new innovation, and we're the only company in the United States that's had multimodality approval and transplant. And we, we, we showed that on the heart side at the end of last year. And when, now we're doing it on the kidney side because we want to continue to bring innovation for um, kidney transplant patients. And so what this does is combine technologies to increase the clinical utility um, for physicians. And so there's a more accurate uh, test and um, you get additional insights as part of that. And we demonstrate that on the heart side and what we're now doing on the kidney side is similar, which is combining different technologies. Here we have the uh, Alishore, which is a donor derived cell RNA, as well as Alimap, which is a gene expression profiling test, which looks at the immune status of the, of the patient. And then IBOX, which is a prognostic algorithm. Now, what we've added since then, um, which you hear about more in the future is, Three, three additional tests. One is called urine map, which is urine test, which I mentioned earlier, which is a, also looking at um, uh, acute cellular rejection, but also a tissue test called histomap, uh, which is the latest form of innovation, which has come in the space. And then also we um, have a uh, infectious disease test called LOID. So what we want to do is bring multiple offerings across multiple modalities to bring incremental value, incremental clinical utility uh, for the physician so that ultimately the patient will benefit and ultimately so we can change the fact that one in five kidney transplant organs will fail within five years. Um, that's our mission and goal to see how we can help. And so as we look at the, the patient engagement, um, and obviously we have so many patients across the globe that have dialed in today, we, we believe that um, you also have a role. And uh, you know we, we have developed what we call our direct to patient uh, approach because we feel that um, you know, we've brought great technologies, we have great relationships with the centers, but we want to develop that relationship with the um, patients even further. And so what we have here is just one example of some of the offerings we're bringing. This is called the Allocare app, and it's something where you know you can do a couple of things. It, it allows medication um, adherence. We talked about how do we improve that adherence. This is a way of ensuring compliance. Uh, the second area um, that uh, this can help out is looking at different um, uh, biometrics, um, which you can capture on a daily basis. Um, as part of this, and thirdly, is including scheduling as you look at um, Alishore. The important thing is we continue to add things to this app, and this can be used not only in post-transplant patients, but also in pre-transplant patients and across different organs. And I think as we've moved um, in this digital world post, uh, post-COVID or during COVID, I think the more chances and interactions we have on a digital basis is so important for us. So we, we continue to um, work with uh, uh, patient groups to bring offerings. And just so you know, Allocare app was designed and developed not by us, but by transplant patients, transplant centers, transplant physicians giving their input and we put it together. So we're really proud to bring the, uh, the Allocare app. And this is something that you know, just has an incredible uptake since it was rolled out at the end of last year. And so one of the other offerings we have is RemoTrack. And this was something that you know, during the peak of COVID last year in, in, in March of the onset, we had um, outreach from multiple centers and patients KDX, how can you help us during this time of COVID? Because, you know, we have to go into, um, you know, get our blood drawn or get our test, whether in, it's in a lab or whether it's in, um, you know, an out, out external body, whether we model patients there, or maybe a chance where we now can along and get our biopsies in some patient settings. And so there was an outreach of how can we help? And so within a matter of a week, we as a company were able to put together this offering called RemoTrack on a national basis of where we could help out um, this community and say, we will give you a remote offering, the safety of your house. Um, and so blood draws could be done there. The important thing about this is this is a service that was asked for by patients for safety, asked for by the centers. And we as a company, without a thought for cost, without a thought of you know having to roll this out, said, well, how do we find a solution? How do we find a solution? That's what we do at KDX. I mean, if it's patient, we're, we're patient focused and we're patient centric. And I think that's why conferences and meetings such as this are so critical to continue that patient story. It's so, you all have an incredible voice, an incredible voice. And that's one that I think you should continue to use of how can companies do more to partner with you? Because our goal is to be that leading partner. And so as we sort of conclude, um, 
this uh, this presentation. I want to again thank AKP. I want to thank GWU for this opportunity. It's the it's the third meeting. I'm so happy to see this progress. But one thing you should know about us is we we continue to embrace working with the um, with the transplant patient community. And we've we during this time of remote offerings, we've we've continued with patient education. And I think we've delivered over more than 20 different presentations and webinars during this uh, during the course of the pandemic. And you know, thousands of patients have, have benefited from these. And, you know, for us, once again, you know, CareDX has been around for more than 20 years. We're going to be around for the next 20. Um, our mission is patient-driven. So thank you again for the time to talk about CareDX, CareDX Day. I'm extremely proud to be the CEO of this Proud company. to be the CEO of this what company. We do. And what we do and because of the fantastic people, people we get to, uh, get to, uh, to, uh, to engage with. Thank you Mr. again. Cito, we have several questions to ask you. How do you tell the difference between patient DNA and kidney DNA? Alshore uses single nucleotide polymorphisms, or commonly known as SNPs, to distinguish between the donor and the recipient. The SNP is a variation that is a change among individuals at a single position in a DNA sequence. Alshore looks at a panel of carefully selected SNPs and uses then an algorithm which is able to discriminate between donor and recipient DNA. And the important thing to note is, as we look at these SNPs, we look at changes across every single somatic chromosome we're the only company that looks at these changes across all, and that's why it's so important to have this type of technology, the one that's being developed from a transplant basis. Our next question, what happens if I am high risk for active rejection with Allosure? If you have an elevated um, Allosure, it's not normal. There is, there is something that's happening which could indicate a form of injury or could be a form of rejection. What typically happens is the physician will then um, do additional workup to exclude whether it's an infection, to do additional blood tests to exclude whether it could be a form of rejection. But this is really a way of telling you something is not right in what's happening and that the, this measurement or this detection of this donor-derived self-renate and this elevation tells you that something is actually happening. So this warrants and requires investigation. And Mr. Shido, one final question. What is the difference between Allosure and my routine labs? Allosure really is the latest form of um, innovation and technology which allows you to actually detect um, forms of injury in the kidney much earlier and also more accurately. So if we compare that, for example, to creatinine, which is often a later test um, and injuries actually happen to the organ already. So for us, it's really important if we want to improve the ability of detection of injury um, to, a, to a kidney transplant, then we need to be able to detect that injury earlier. And so that's why Alshaw is such a powerful diagnostic tool. We appreciate Mr. Cito for taking the time to share his insights and expertise. Thank you.